Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to another video about introduction to Python. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about functions. We're going to see how to create functions. Why do we need functions? And we're going to create some uh, simple, uh, we're going to see some simple use cases of functions. So without further ado, let's begin. So before we get into the code, uh, you can find the codes in this repository, intro to Python. The link to this repository is in the video's description. Uh, so far, we've talked about several uh, features of Python, like loops, dictionaries, different data types. And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about function basics. Uh, and if you haven't watched the previous videos, I strongly suggest you to do so. So, functions basics, where we're going to see how to create a simple function, how to call that function, and how we can pass in different function arguments. Uh, and what are the meanings of keyword arguments and default arguments? We're going to see all this five section in this video. So before we start and we check the code, check the codes. Let why do we need functions? Consider that you got a project and it consists of like one thousand lines of codes. Okay. Uh, if uh, you have a, a, a mathematical formulation, okay, consider you've got a mathematical formulation that it is uh, it is consisted of like 10 files, 10 lines of code, and you have used this uh, mathematical function in like uh, 5 or 10 part of your code. The first idea you may have is to, okay, I'm going to copy these 10 lines of code for that math, for that specific mathematical functionality, and I'm going to copy it in which place that I like it. It may work, definitely, at the first play it works, but consider that there is a hidden bug in your code, in your uh, equation or something, and after using that, for example, after a week, you figure that bug out. So what's going to happen? You have to like uh, debug like 10 part of your code because you have 10, part of your pro 10 parts of your project because you have copied the, the 10 lines into like 10 or 20 uh, sections of your code. And it makes it really hard because you have repeated yourself several times and each in each repetition, you are going to change and find that bug. And or or consider you want to add a functionality or you want to enhance that code. So you have to you have to uh, repeat your enhancement to like all the repetitions, all the repeated codes in your project. So it's really it, it makes it really messy. In that case, there's a protocol called "Don't Repeat Yourself." So it's better if you think that you're going to use uh, a code a snippet more than once, that's the place you should use functions. Functions simply is a block of code which only runs when it is called, okay? It wraps your uh, that block that you care. And you can pass in data, uh, by data I mean uh, input arguments, input variables, okay? And you can get some output as arguments, as variables as well from your function. And simply, it just wraps your code. It's encapsulated an idea. And another benefit from functions that functions bring about for us is that they enable us to unit test. Okay, let's get back to the same example that I gave. Uh, your project consisting of like 1,000 lines of code. Checking different parts of this code is very hard because you have to run all the code to get, for example, to line 90, 950, okay? You need to run all the code. But when you split your code to functions, to small functions, uh, in that case, each function kind of uh, has a, a concept. It's better to have one concept, but it can contain more than one uh, idea or it can... Uh, do more than one uh, responsibility, okay? It can have more than one responsibility, but it's okay sometimes you, you have one function that could, that has consisted of several functions. Yeah, let's not get into that, okay? So consider your, you can split your code into a smaller function, and each smaller function has some input variables, and it returns something, or it may not return anything. Well, we'll get to that. 
considering for the sake of simplicity, consider it takes some arguments and it returns an argument or returns a, a variable. It is very easy to test the simple uh, functionality, the simple block of code compared to like uh, uh, testing your 1000 code in your project. So another benefit of using functions is that it enables us to easily test the or block of codes and get rid of the bugs and and on top of that we can simply debug uh, if if we have any bugs in the codes in our code we can simply by debugging that function we know that each place of code uh, each place of our code that has used this uh, function or it has called this function is going to automatically debug so there are several use cases. Why do we need function? But I just want to end with two of them. And I want to go uh, to the rest of the code and see how we can create a function. So to create a function, we use def, the keyword, or, uh, the keyword of Python, which is called def. I think it stands for definition defining or function. After uh, def you should uh, put your function's name here it says return func it's not a good name definitely but i just wanted to convey a message here uh, this return func is the is a simple function that returns hello world by default okay it, it, uh, yeah. there is no variability to this function it's, uh, anytime you call it it's going to return hello world it, it can't be changed okay so after the name of the function, you should put uh, round brackets. Inside round brackets, you can uh, give your, uh, you can define your uh, input arguments, or you can simply uh, set it empty, which means you can leave it uh, empty, which means that there are no input arguments. So, and after that, like always, in, we are going to have a colon, which means that we are going to start the, the block of the indentation of the function. Whatever that comes after the indentation belongs to this function. Okay, after this indentation, what it, what it comes, it belongs to this function. So, let me run this. This is how we define a function. As you can see, return a function, uh, return a func, and I haven't fully defined it and there are no input argument and by default it returns an a, a string to return something you should use again a keyboard of python which is called return whatever it comes after return will be returned as the output of that function so let me run it again okay let's see how we can call a function to call a function uh, we simply write the name of the function code the name of the function and again, uh, the round brackets. If there are any uh, input arguments, we're gonna pass the input arguments. If there are not, so uh, we'll leave it empty. And as you can see, okay, uh, let me run the code again. And as you can see, it returns hello, for, hello world and it is, print, uh, it is shown in the output of the cell. Most of the times uh, you don't want to just use your function to print out something in the output you want to assign it to a variable you want to assign your output of your function to another var uh, variable so you can use it you can further process it or you can pass it to another function another class another method that we're going to talk about in the future videos here let's see how we can assign the output the return of our function or the output of our function into a variable and as you can see, we can do it with like uh, our usual way we used to, uh, we had to uh, declare a new variable. Okay. We write the variable name, equality sign, and the function, the call of the function. The call of the function will return hello world, and hello world is gonna, uh, is assigned to result. And result is, let's see the output. And as you can see, the result is hello world because uh, the output of the return func, the return was hello world. Not all the functions has return, 
okay not all of them some of them may not return anything like this one no return funk because it doesn't return anything although it prints out something as in here uh okay as in here although it returns something let me yeah it returns uh it prints out the hello world but it doesn't mean that it is, it is returning something because when you call this function the print will uh, execute it is executed and the output is printed in the console or in the cells output which is an interactive cell uh, but it doesn't mean that it is returning something to make sure you can see I assign the output of no return farm to result and the value of the result is none so whether you define return for a function or not if you define it's okay but if you don't define it uh, the function returns something and when there is no uh, return keyword defined here the function by default returns not as you can see here so the output of no return func is sorry about that is result okay so the no return find the output is assigned to return uh, to result and as you can see here the result is uh, equal to not so whether you define a return or i uh, don't define it your function returns something when you don't define anything your function returns none but when you define something like this one that we defined uh, or define your function to return uh, hello world it returns a string simply is that so let's see how we can pass in uh, function arguments so function arguments are the data or the variables you want to pass uh, into your function so that your function can operate some code uh, based on that based on those inputs as, a, as an example, get power is a function that uh, gets the power of a number. Okay, here the power of number two, uh, the two power is uh, evaluated and returned. Okay, uh, and like here, the way you can call it is like always uh, the round brackets, and uh, you pass in your values. Uh, here, uh, the num is equal to Ten and two power is equal to three. So the power number will be one thousand because ten to the power of three is equal to uh, one thousand. Okay, I didn't run this one, so it says name get power is not defined because I didn't run. I didn't run. I didn't run this one. So here, as you can see, the get power works fine, and it returns one thousand. You can change it. I mean, you can do it five. So this is one benefit of. Uh, functions you can use function in different parts okay like for example in different part of your code for example get power you, you for example you want to get power of like five in one of your one of your uh, one of the sections of your codes and in another section you want to get the power of like 10 it's up to you you can uh, you can uh, use your function with different input arguments that's the good part of functions so this is how we define input parameters, input arguments, whatever you call it. And this is how we pass in the input arguments. So let's see some errors. Okay, consider like here, we got a get full name. It's, uh, it doesn't return anything. You can, uh, let me return something. Better to return something, I think. Maybe I like this one. Uh, it simply combines the first name and the last name of, uh, of someone and uh, returns it like here and as you can see it has two input arguments and I pass uh, in two input arguments to this function so uh, what happens if we pass one input argument while the function requires two like in this example okay, whenever you do that you'll get a type error uh, like this one you'll get a, you'll get an error which is called type error and simply uh, reading the error helps like all the time it says get full name missing one required positional argument it says we've got a positional argument so what is a positional argument we'll see when we talk about the uh, 
default arguments. This positional argument says you uh, didn't uh, pass in this. Uh, this position is empty. Okay, we've got two positions for two uh, two of our arguments. Okay, the first one is f name and the other one is l name, but one of them is missing. Okay, the position of l name is missing. As you can see, it says positional argument because we are passing inputs by their position. Here, when I uh, pass them, uh, when here it says five and three. Okay, how uh, Python uh, realized that this five is intended for num and three is intended for two power is based on their order, based on their position. Okay. Uh, the position of 5 is index like 0, if we consider it as a tuple, you can say that uh, the index of 5 is 0 and the index is of 3 is 1. So here the index of num is the, uh, 0 and the index of 2 power is 1. So 5 is, is going to be assigned to num and 3 is going to be assigned to power. It is based on their position, based on their index. Kind of you can say that uh, as well and here it says one of the positions uh, positional arguments is empty and it is called l name because the first one is going to be assigned to is assigned to f name and the second one is assigned to l name but we don't have the second one here so it says you know bro you should provide me the positional argument as well so you'll get a type error whenever you don't provide uh, enough arguments so let me make this a little bit smaller so you can see this or I can do it like this. Okay, so we can see all the text. Okay, here. This is another function. It's called add. It has two arguments, variable one and variable two. Here it is going to return an error. It says that look again, we got a missing positional argument. It is required because without this variable two, I mean, how uh, Python is going to uh, execute this line var one plus var two. Uh, and for example, here you can add like ten plus five. And as you can see, variable one is equal to ten. This is again based on the assignment is based on position, and variable two is assigned to five again based on position or index. And here, one of the position arguments are empty. So make sure that you pass all your uh, position arguments. So let's talk about keyword arguments. Okay, keyword arguments. Whenever you are passing you're passing your input arguments you may kind of feel confused okay which one was assigned to which one which position is assigned to which variable because not all the time you don't have the definition of the function uh, like uh, near your code consider you're using some function from a third party library in that case you don't have the access to the Actually, you have access to the definition, but it's not as easy like this. I mean, here I scroll up and I see the function, but when you're working with third-party libraries, it's not that easy. So what should we do in that case? Uh, there is a uh, notion called passing your arguments with your keyword. Here, you say, you know what? I want to pass in 10 to variable 1 and my variable 2 I want to make sure that 20 is assigned, is assigned to variable 2 so when you are using keyword arguments you're passing the name of the argument along with the value or the other way around you're passing the value along with the keyword's name its name the argument's name so uh, the one benefit of that is that, that the order is not required anymore you can pass in with any order that you like like here for example variable one and variable two the orders are not required so i can pass in with any order that i like but still uh i will uh, i prefer to uh, follow the order maintain the order because that way uh, other users can get along with your code better they can understand it better it's my opinion but one of the benefits of keyword keyword Arguments is that that you don't need to maintain the order the, or the position of uh, your arguments. And like always, let's see another <laughs> error. If 
you define an argument which is not if you pass in an argument which is not defined you'll get again type error with uh, with uh, a different error message error message that says got an unexpected keyword argument it says that you know the function add got an, a, a keyword which is uh, which was unexpected for example we don't have any of our three okay where did you get it from <laughs> we don't have it so you'll get again type error but with another uh, variable argument uh, and the, the same uh, error applies here like this you may pass in var1 but still it says that you know var2 is not assigned okay so it doesn't matter whether you use positional uh, arguments or you go on with keyword arguments in both case you should provide all the required arguments because these arguments are required uh, in the definition okay definition these are required so uh, how we can define some arguments that are not uh, required uh, we'll see it in this section before that section let's talk about this one that says how to combine keyword arguments with positional argument and as you can see here it says the positional argument uh, of var2 is required so you should uh, you should pass it along with var1 no matter whether you use it with uh, you pass it like with positional argument as a positional argument or you pass it uh, as a as a keyword argument so how we can use positional arguments and keyword arguments this is how we can do that as you can see we can uh, pass in or positional arguments first uh, positional arguments comes first arguments come first after positional arguments you can use your keyword arguments as in here for example i say for example var1 is equal to 20 because uh, you may for example use the add like several times and you know that the first parameter name is var1 and you just don't want to pass it okay it happens a lot and from the rest of the arguments you're not sure about their names so you just want to pass them as keyword arguments in here it's going to work because uh, it it works because the first value is assigned to var1 it's by position it is assigned after position you have uh, after positional arguments you can pass in your keyword arguments so positional arguments come not comes come first then keyword arguments are used uh, you can define your keyword arguments like this so what happens if you use your keyword arguments then uh, then use a positional arguments you'll get an error simply it says that such a thing is not possible uh it says it's a syntax error and positional arguments uh it says a positional argument follows a keyword argument so it says it's not possible you can pass in uh positional arguments after keyword arguments because whenever you use keyword arguments you kind of convey them convey this message you signal this message to python that you know what i don't care about the order when i use the keyword argument so when you use that when you use keyword arguments the order is uh kind of not maintained anymore and you should pass the rest of your arguments uh, as a key as keyword arguments look here unless you'll get a syntax error so whenever you got this error don't panic it just <laughs> you should pass this one as a keyword argument as well so let's talk about default parameters so what are default parameters um consider that you got you're going to create a function with like tens of input arguments uh, for example matplotlib uh, matplotlib will uh, will introduce it in the future we'll get introduced uh, to it in future videos uh, it is used to draw uh, some lines and stuff on canvas so for example you want to draw a line so that you can have like a lot of input arguments like what should be the color uh, what should the, what should be the bits of the line or uh, where to draw it or whatever there are lots of input arguments and 
most of the times, whether you are uh, defining the function for yourself, you don't want to bother yourself each time to pass in several arguments. You, you define default values for your input argument. So uh, in that case, the default uh, parameters or arguments, uh, they are not required to any values. They don't require any values. Whether someone pass in some value, okay, they are going to be changed. They are changed. But if, uh, if the user does not pass in any value, that parameter is going to be uh, the default that has been used that has been defined so most of the time when you use default arguments you mainly uh, defined by the values that that they are most of the time used okay so, uh, or you want to uh, kind of uh, make your code safe consider that you're a, a function and one of you the functionality is uh, where to delete files okay so it's better to set the parameter whether to delete uh, files to false okay so whenever the user use it by default the user is not gonna delete files remove the files because uh, what if the user does not want to remove their files in that case it's better to err on the side of caution and uh, set it to false to let that's safer so th there are several reasons why we may want to use default uh, parameters one of them was that you don't want to bother the other users or 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 yourself to pass in several parameters that most of the time you're you're passing the same value or you want to make it safer whenever somebody use it so you you make sure that they are not gonna mistakenly for example make changes that they cannot be reverse like removing files whenever you remove a file there's no way you can return it back so it's better to set that parameter do you want to remove the file or for example your parameter may be named like remove it's better to set it by default to false so the the files uh, that won't get uh, removed in that case so here your function add again simple function the variable one no default values defined here but variable two as you can see there's a default value it is called five so the variable two uh, five is assigned to variable two and uh, um, the user should uh, uh, may not pass in value for variable one as you can see here the variable two is a default parameter default argument i just pass in variable one simple as that and as you can see here variable one is 15 variable two is five and uh, and it works because variable two by default it is five and i didn't pass in anything or you can pass in both arguments and whenever you don't define any names again like a simple uh, function the positional uh, arguments will be assigned for example by position this one will be assigned is assigned to variable one and this one is assigned to variable two so you can see here the variable two value is 15 okay then variable two's value can be changed if somebody passes it uh, passes a value for that you can use again with keyword arguments there is no conflict within this uh, ideas with this code so uh, i want to pass in variable two at the beginning as always uh, keyword arguments are there most of the time we don't want to follow the order or <laughs> maintain the order we use uh, uh, keyword arguments so here i want to pass variable at the beginning of my uh, arguments and variable one at the end it simply works again variable two is assigned to four and its default is changed so this is another simple example of uh, default variable for example i live in iran so uh, i think most of the times that i'm going to use this function uh, i'm going to pass in iran so i uh, typed uh, i defined the default variable for the country but others can simply pass in their country name like this or they can de even define for example in one of them use uh, this uh, these are defined uh, the arguments in this uh, in these two examples are passed by position but in this one is passed by keyword and it doesn't matter the output are the same 
So this is the end of the code. Like always, please subscribe the channel, click on the bell ring so you would be notified of the future videos. Till the next uh, video, have a great time.